I'm street passing you all. What? What's going on? You're here for a panel, Gus. All right. It's cool. going to be great. Don't worry about oh, it. How's it going? Is everybody ready? Yeah. Good, you know. None of this hand raising stuff. Clap, cheer, boo, whatever you feel like. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to Kind of Funny Building the Next Rooster Teeth while secretly planning to fight the current Rooster Teeth. If you didn't know, I'm Greg Miller from KindOfFunny.com. Over at the end, we have the pure one, Tim Geddes. Let's him host. The producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. Hi. What are you eating? Have you tried these almond coconut cashew chai sure kind bars? Sure haven't tried They're that. real good. Yeah? Real good. And over guys, here, what, you have more to say about the bar? I always have more to say. You can There's introduce him first panel, if you want, probably. but you got to come right back to me. And over here... Does, does he need an introduction? Gus from Rooster Teeth. So, um, I'm a little confused. Um, one, yeah. I don't know why I'm here. And mean? two, I, you didn't tell me you were going to fight? Oh, yeah. Well, funny story about that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the internet. My name is Greg Miller from KindOfFunny.com. And I have been waiting far too long to tell all of you on YouTube.com. I actually oh need God. an EMT. <laughs> uh, now we need an EMT. God damn it. Somebody patch up Gus. Those really hurt. <laughs> How many of those do you have? <laughs> the, the Coke is the only non-breakaway bottle no! on the table. <laughs> so how's everybody doing? Welcome to Rooster Teeth. Welcome to RTX 2015. Please give Gus another round of applause as he bleeds backstage. Please boo Nick Scarpino as he doesn't bleed. <laughs> My so God. This is awesome for the next panel. They're, they're going to sit down with this broken glass everywhere. So, well, we said we were going to fight Gus, and we did. Yeah. We won. And, and I want to point out, he went out like a bitch. <laughs> One hit, down for the count, that was the end of it. He's texting me. Probably, please leave RTX. No. He'll be back, he says. Of course, we all do that. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching on YouTube.com slash Rooster Teeth, hi. We're kind of funny, and we do stupid stunts we don't think through all the way and hurt our friends. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we called our panel Building the Next Rooster Teeth because, if you didn't know, in January we left our jobs at IGN.com to start our own thing called Kind of Funny. We do podcasts. Thank you. Thank you. Independent business owners. And I think, Tim, you'll speak for all of us when you say that Rooster Teeth's been a huge influence on us. Definitely, man. Rooster Teeth's been my favorite thing since it started. Like, the past 13 years, every week, watching Red vs. Blue, doing my thing, watching all the shows, watching them progress and stuff, and then doing our thing, I feel like a lot of what we do is based on what I learned from them and what I enjoyed them doing. So right. Now we're doing that's the whole thing is like, I think it, when you look back and you talk to Bernie or you talk to Gus, who I've killed, unfortunately. Yeah, um, I'm really worried about him. Is he okay? He said he's, he said he's woozy and he can't feel his legs, but he's going to be back. Oh, good. <laughs> all right. But that was the whole thing, right? Is you, I think... And we don't want to get ahead of ourselves, right? But we're seven months, eight months into this business now. And when you talk to Bernie and you talk to Gus about the early days of what they were doing, right? It seems like what we're doing. Yeah. We're in which a spare is, bedroom. Which is really cool because I followed them back then, you know? Like yeah. Just, I mean, pre-Twitter and stuff. But, like, on the different social media sites, and, like, I remember seeing pictures of, like, the, the rooms they were working in. Right. Like, not even offices, you know? Yeah. And that's where we're at now, and it's really cool. Yeah. So, what do we do next? I don't know. The whole, we were supposed to ask Gus for advice. No, I meant as a company. Again, we've killed Gus. Yeah. It was very clear. What I appreciate the most about this is that every time I've run into Bernie leading up to this panel, he's been, thanks for the super insulting panel. Hope it goes really well. <laughs> and then we broke Gus. <laughs> yeah. So that was upsetting. I mean, mm -hmm. we said we'd fight him, and we killed him. Yeah. So that's one way to do it, I guess. But I feel really bad because I hit Nick in the head, and I feel like I hurt him. No, no. I, what's funny is right before you hit, I remember someone telling me, hey, be careful because those things can actually cut you, and they actually hurt. And you went full on. I mean, as I wanted hard it to as possible. You wanted the it to entire break. side of my head 
is throbbing right now. I, I apologize. Profusely. And I'm trying to slick the blood back into it. Well, to go it with looks like cool. a Kurt Russell like tequila a nice sunrise thing. style look. Yeah. Is it working? You're my little tequila sunrise, Nick. Thank you. Yeah. You're so my little Nick. churro. <laughs> what? Well, you're hot right, on Greg, the outside. What, what do you have to say, Greg? I want Nick to talk to the audience. Nick, you're our businessman. Yeah. You make all the HR stuff happen. You make sure. all the payroll stuff happen. I tickle Kevin sometimes. How do we build... You do tickle Kevin all the time. If you're in the autograph line, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Every time if somebody steps up to get their photo with Kind of Funny, you start tickling Kevin. And it's like, well, now they got a blurry photo of a little yeah. guy jumping around on the side of the... <laughs> little guy? Big Say hi to Kevin. He's back there filming stuff. What's up, Kevin? Hey, Kevin! Does, does Kevin really need to be back there the whole time? Hey! hey! He's alive. Let me see your face. So, we, no, I, I cleaned it all off. We, uh, we had talked about this. Sorry, I'm going to just derail your, uh, your conversation. Oh, we were just stalling. And I, I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, it'll be funny. You come out, you hit me with the bottle. And uh, I was like, yeah, I was laying down. I was like, why is my face wet? I'm so like, sorry. Oh, wow, that's blood. No, it was, like, it was like nothing, but it was like, oh, shit, like, I just need to go clean it real fast and come back. I was like, like, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to really no. fight you. I don't. You're <laughs> actually the, fighting. That's it. You're yeah, one of the I'm few of rooster here. teeth people who actually like me. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, <laughs> and it's just like, I'm going to, I'm going to, who knows John Drake? And this is a deep cut. I'm going to chew John Drake's ass because these are the same pe- bo- ba- bottles we use for Pax Mania. And they've, no one's ever been cut in the history of our I, fake wrestling event. I'm, I'm a very frail, thin-skinned person. <laughs> <laughs> Years of sitting in front of a computer monitor and uh, video game consoles have, uh, have turned me into paper, like rice paper. So, Gus, my question for you. Are we on a good path is kind of funny. We, we look at you guys as inspiration, how you started, where you, you were. You were until about four minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> now dead to you guys. I mean, now it's like... Here. Um, no, I think it's great, you know, the, the path that you guys have taken watching, you know, all the stuff you do. It reinforces, you know, whenever we were starting with Steve and whenever we were coming up, people always ask, you know, what is it that you do to get, you know, to get noticed and to get started? And I said, you know, it's a lot more of a competitive landscape now, but the things that I think still hold true are regular scheduled content releases. Like, it's almost like television. People have been trained in how to ingest mm-hmm. this stuff. Sure. So it's like, having your set schedule, doing your streams at a certain time, and releasing your videos on a regular basis that people know about, it's like, absolutely. Yeah. And, and it shows. I mean, your numbers have just grown, and watching people, and uh, the word of mouth has been amazing. Yeah, we've been super lucky, and you guys have been a big part of that. And that, that's what's been, I guess, it wasn't interesting to me until somebody pointed it out. I liked when we, because, you know, we've been friends for a while now. Ever, yeah. ever since the gauntlet. We were watching NFL Sunday Ticket together. Oh, yeah. Ever since about five minutes ago. <laughs> until, yeah. until about five minutes ago. I want you to stop playing with that because it's freaking it's, me out a little bit. It's fun. Look at you me, everybody. You can cut yourself, though. It's, I'm, I'm it's, like, it's made out of sharp. sugar, right? Yeah, it's I mean, sugar it's glass. It's sugar. <laughs> yeah. Have but... you ever cut yourself with sugar? <laughs> <laughs> I once broke a window with a water balloon, and I was like, how the fuck? Like, what? What is wrong with me? And I, and I broke gas. You have Herculean strength, man. I do have that Herculean strength. You have, you, you have the strength of a bear but the heart of a small kitten. <laughs> and you that's cry a, like that. I do cry. Oh, that's true. I'm a crier. Yeah. Christina, am I a crier? Yeah. That, that, sounds uh, like, that sounds like a bear with vascular problems. It's like... <laughs> like a small heart. Yeah, a bee that's like, I just can't. I don't, not enough blood flow. <laughs> that's spot on. <laughs> spot on. So what I th- found interesting when somebody pointed it out is that when we left and we started kind of funny and we were like, we're going to do all this stuff, you began like giving advice on, to us on Twitter. And not, and not like, like from the mountaintop, but as our friend or whatever. And oh, somebody yeah. tweeted back at you, I remember being like, this is so cool to see Rooster Teeth helping out a competitor. <laughs> and I was like, are we really a competitor? Like, do you view anyone on the internet anymore as a competitor? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I think it's a, it's a very, you know, wide landscape. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess technically, yes. But, I mean, there's six billion people on the planet and neither of us has a six billion view video so right, that's a good point yeah. we, we got a ways to go Only Gavin will long, eventually yeah. I'm sure he'll Gavin figure out some eventually. way something in slow-mo w- once we acquire Psy and yeah. we get all those Gangnam style in slow-mo views, yeah we'll be set but no I mean I, I guess you know technically by definition we would be but yeah but it doesn't feel like that right no. like I mean is, do you guys feel like it's, we're ever competing with Rooster Teeth no. I was, uh, the thing I always tell and good, good audio, audience response by the way you were all asleep yesterday during Colin and Greg Live, but you're on point today. <laughs> uh, that was the thing, you know, when people talk about it, like, I've, w- coming from video game press or whatever you want to call it, enthusiast press, right, I remember that you had meetings and you were looking at 
sites that were like you saying, oh, well, we gotta, what are their numbers? We have to take them down, da, da, da. And I keep telling people here that I feel like in the age we live in now with the internet, there aren't competitors, there's just collaborators. Yeah, I mean, and I think it's apparent when you come to uh, a show like this where, you know, we've got you guys here, we've got the Rocket Jump folks here, mm -hmm. uh, the Game Grumps are here. It's like, technically, we all work in the same space. Technically, we're all competitors, but, you know, we're all just hanging out, drinking, you know, yeah. hitting each other over the head with bottles, making each other bleed. Yeah. Um, it's, it's fun. Does anybody have a razor blade? He can cut me back. <laughs> <laughs> Does it's anyone have a bottle opener? Oh, you're the oh, best. Oh, look at that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Also, if any guardians can hear my voice, if we could get new waters, there's glass in all of these. <laughs> I didn't think Whose fault everything is that, through Greg? with the opening stunt. That's shocker. Me. You know, shocker. You so you're much. a shocker? You're the best. Shocker. Shocker. So then, Tim, mm -hmm. what is it like for you as a lifelong Rooster Teeth fan to be here, a collaborator, on a panel with Gus? None of this makes sense. And I, I think that's the coolest thing about my job is like, I just keep wanting things to happen and then they just keep happening. But then I stop and think, I'm like, why is this happening? And I'm like, because I'm making it happen. And that sounds really cyclical and stupid. But it's just like, everyone always asks, like, what's the advice? Like, how can I like, do what you guys are doing? It's like, literally just do it. Mm -hmm. There's nothing special about me. I can guarantee you there's nothing special about Nick. Not one thing. And it's like, <laughs> we just thing. keep doing things though and then people like it because if we, we're doing stuff that we like. Chances are someone else likes it too, you know? And it's like when they were doing Rooster Teeth stuff, like that, but back in the day, Red versus Blue, it was the same thing. They did it. They thought it was funny. Obviously, someone else would think it's funny. I did, and here I am. You know, it's that's awesome. that, that that's that actually plays into another question, or like the similar question I was talking about earlier. People asking, like, how do you get people to watch? And I said, you know, regularly scheduled content releases. And then the other thing is, lots of times people say, yeah, I really want to do the kinds of things you do. I'm just waiting for this to happen, then I'll get started. I say, don't. Like, yeah. why? You yeah. don't delay. Yeah. It's like you can start right now. I was like, I tell them everyone. It's like yeah. you have a ton of shitty videos in you. Mm -hmm. Get them all out of the way, yeah. learn it, practice it, get good, and then have that back catalog. Yep. It's like when we hired Michael at Rooster Teeth, you know, we saw his crackdown video. We thought, God, that's really <laughs> funny. Then we immediately went to see like, what else has he done? And we went through every video. He was like, God, this guy's been uploading forever. Like, he's got a huge catalog. They're not all good. Yeah. But, we, 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 but he was doing the growth and he was working on it. Mm -hmm. It's like, we appreciate it. And that's why like that mm -hmm. day we were like trying to get a hold of him. Mm -hmm. It's like, we, we want you to come on board. Yeah. Yeah, what's the old adage, tomorrow is the worst word in, in the English language? Yeah. Like tomorrow is, tomorrow is like your worst enemy because you always say, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. And then Yesterday like, you said tomorrow. 17 <laughs> months later. Do like, it. Yeah. Do Just it. Just do it. So then Gus, seven months in to our business here, what do, what do we need to know? What do you wish you knew? Or what, was, you know, what we, do you wish was on your radar when Rooster Teeth is getting started like we are? I think you guys are definitely much more ahead of the curve than we were at the time. You know, watching the fact that you guys did a live event, you know, so soon after launching, I think, you know, live events, you know, as is evidenced by the fact that we're here, live events is definitely, as, as weird as it sounds, as it sounds, is the next evolution in, like, online content creation. Sure. Uh, and it goes back to kind of what Tim was saying earlier. It's like, we made stuff that we thought was funny, and we thought, surely there's other people who think it's funny. Guess what? Those people also want to meet each other. Yeah. That's why uh, these live events are so great. It's that you're bringing people together and making co individual connections outside of just increasing a little odometer on YouTube. So I think, you know, the fact you guys did something uh, together so early, I think that's fucking phenomenal. Um, um, and more power to you, man. That's intimidating. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Nick did all the heavy lifting. I didn't have to do much. <laughs> Me and Tim did most of it, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. That's, a great, but that's a, another great show. That's a cool thing about how this all works, too, is the fact that Every, everyone's fans of each other, or at least could be fans of each other. So it's like, I'm a content creator, but I'm also a huge fan of Rooster Teeth. And then it's like, Freddie Wong and Rocket Jump and stuff, like, I'm a huge fan of them. There's, like, we meet people that are like, oh my god, I love your stuff. And I'm like, okay. like I met, do you guys know Warp Zone? Their YouTube oh. channel, they're awesome. Thank, thank you. So uh, I met Davis, and he was talking, and he was just like, dude, like, I'm, I'm like starstruck talking. I'm like, what are you talking about? I've been watching your videos for like 10 years. And it's just like, it's cool that, you know, we all kind of have so much similarities like we can you can look at anyone in this room and ask them like what's your favorite video game and they'll have an answer you know and then that starts a conversation and it, that's really cool what's happening we got distracted by greg's water greg's pouring water i i don't like it behind me though i can't see him i just see a shadow over me it's like the rest of my life flashing before my eyes looming coming to get you he is yes so, so when you i'm, I'm, I'm going to turn the tables maybe please I'll, do. I'll ask you a couple of questions so you know in going out and striking you know your own independence and doing your own thing what do you think what do you feel was the most intimidating part of the process the most intimidating step in getting stuff off the ground oh man 
I guess it was figuring out what the right time was going to be. You know what I mean? Like the conversation started for us, like it would have been like 13 months, months ago. Like, all right, we love doing YouTube. We think we love it doing more than IGN. What do we do? Like, I, I, we, I remember Nick being like, all right, what's everybody's number? Like, what do, you, what do we need to make to do it? And we wrote down those numbers and we were like, well, we're going to be, let's, let's come back in a year, a year and a half. You know what I mean? That was the big thing of like, we weren't going to make that money off the bat and how could we survive in San Francisco and do all these different things and we didn't know how to make it work. And then right after that, we found out about Patreon. Yeah. We went to talk to them and then we did the first Patreon while we were still at IGN where we rebranded as kind of funny. And that was like, the toe in the water thing of like, well, let's see how people support us and will they or what are they going to think about this and is it going to come off as us being money grubby and da 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 da. And then overnight we had ten thousand dollars and we we're like, people are giving us this much to make the content they love and they know we have good jobs. That's yeah, awesome. and I think a big thing there too is the fact that we didn't treat it so much as a crowdfunding thing as much as a subscription service, which is another thing that I was influenced by Rooster Teeth. Like I have been a sponsor for ten years and I pay to get the content early because I believe in it and I support you guys. And I knew that if we created a tier system that wasn't based on like weird random perks and stuff, although we have those as well. Um, <laughs> like, if you want Colin to make you sauce, you can, you can get that done. It's good but sauce. We, we base it more about getting the podcasts like early to them and all that stuff because we know that's what they want and we know that people are gonna want it early and that they just wanna support us because they want more stuff to happen. And like, it's, kind of, it's awesome because we just get to look at all of the, the fans and stuff and be like, hey, do you want more stuff? Make it happen, and then they do. It's really cool. You know, I, I got to say, I, I don't know how long Patreon as a platform existed before you guys used it, but I'd never heard of it until mm -hmm. you guys launched it. And now I feel like I see it all over the place. So I, I give you guys credit for, uh, for getting their name out there. It was one of those where we, <laughs> by the time I realized what YouTube was after that first VidCon, we were so late to YouTube, right? Yeah. Like I look back and I'm like, when I was outside of IGN, when I was working at the Daily Newspaper, right? Like I did these videos about the, Wii, the launch of the Wii, like the line at midnight and the launch of the PS3. And I put them on YouTube so I can embed them on my newspaper blog. And I remember when YouTube was constantly emailing me, me like, hey, this has 300,000 views. Do you want to monetize it? And I was like, oh, that's cute or whatever. No thanks, don't worry about it. You know what I mean? And then it's like, if only I would have thought back then of like, wait, turn the camera around and just talk about games and put those up, you know what I mean? Like it would have been, we would have been like up there with like whoever, Justine or Freddie, you know what I mean? Like it would have been a different thing. But by the time we got to it, like the days of getting a million subs overnight, unless you're fun house, are, are done. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so that was the thing of like, we, we were late to the party there and we can still make a living on it obviously. And we're, you know, we we're in getting these podcasts going, but we're rebuilding what we already had and all this different stuff. But Patreon was the first thing where it's like, we're tip of the sword on this. This is different. And we get to go out and do introduce it to different people. So that was, our, I think, the first really big thing we got to be a part of. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because, you know, you talk about, you know, the perks people get. It's almost like you're pioneering the, the, the way that that's tiered and the way that people approach it. Because, you know, obviously people look like, okay, well, they made it work. Like, how, what does their system look like? Yep. Because now with a lot of Kickstarter and Indiegogo, people look to other successful campaigns. Yeah. And well, I mean, there was, like there was a good maybe three week period where my sole job was looking at other people's Kickstarters and Patreons and stuff and kind of researching and figuring out what is right for our audience. And I think that's the key. It's not just like, oh, let's copy what these people do. It's you really need to know these, like who you're delivering your content to and then give them what they want. Because if you give them what they want, everyone's happy. Yeah, that was the big thing for us, right? Especially in the fact that, you know, when, I remember when I launched the YouTube channel on its own, right? And I was like, well, I have 100,000 Twitter followers. And I'm like, I'll get 100,000 views on videos. And you launch it, and I'm like, we're scraping to 9,000 on the first season of Conversation with Con. I'm like, what is going on? You know, how does this work? And so then growing that channel, seeing it, you know, like, like today, right? We have like a little over 250,000 subs. And then each video does 30 to 40 to 50, somewhere in that range, right? It's like, damn, they're not consuming everything. And how does that work? But now it's like, you go to Patreon and it's, you know, total 10,000 patrons, but it's really like 8,000 because the survey said most people are doubling up and doing it. And it's like, it's, it's very similar. I remember when we were, when right after the laser team stuff happened and Bernie gave a speech at VidCon where he's like, I know the number, the, the dollar sign is impressive, but really what you need to look at is this. These are the number of people supporting us. And that's these best friends, right? That will like travel from Scotland to come see us and not even be that big into, they're right up front, right back. Like right, not even be that into Rooster Teeth, but they want to come support us and right. be part of it. And it's like, those are the people that I didn't, we didn't know existed, or I didn't know existed, right? We knew we had fans and people who consumed our content, but when we were at IGN, IGN was, I was always fighting that uphill battle of like, we're not the corporate behemoth, we're a bunch of people who like video games, please don't hate us. I know, it's, I know you can spell ignorant with it, it's not, it's not <laughs> clever, I get it, don't worry about it. And so like, when we got out there and like, 
we started putting up content and we'd apologize for audio quality on Patreon or like it'd be late. I'm like, I'm so sorry it's going to be late. I'd be so apologetic. And it was like battered wives syndrome of like these, the, the new people had to be like, no, we love you. Don't worry. It's okay. <laughs> We're not going to tear you apart if you're late on something. And it was like, oh, okay. And that's really where it's, the ball's been rolling now in the fact that the best friends and stuff like that. Cool. Yeah, I mean, you talk about engagement and, you know, the trying to translate you know, a follower or something on one platform to a view yeah. or another thing on another platform. And you look at, you know, even the big example we always use is um, Ashton Kutcher, who's got like millions of Twitter followers, but then he put out, you know, I forget what movie it was, like The Butterfly Effect or something. Yeah. It's like, and nobody goes and sees it in the theater. Yeah. You know, despite the fact he has a platform with supposedly millions of people yep. on there. And say, you, how do you translate that into a call to action that yeah. actually means something? And that's yeah. the craziest thing that, I mean, for me, it was, like, I always talk about this and I always tell our community and our best friends, you know, we call our, our people best friends, by the way. I, 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 mean, I, I, I don't know, know if you ever consume the content. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> what I always tell them is they don't understand the power they have and the story always goes for me is when I was doing up at noon Chris Jericho came on and I got him like I got a lot of guests by people pleasantly tweeting at him and asking him to come on the show and then he reached out and followed and we figured it out and he came on and like I you know he was like he is my favorite wrestler of all time so like walking up to him my heart was like beating and I hadn't been nervous to meet somebody in forever and then I sat down and we were talking everything's cool and at some point he's like and he's like I gotta tell you your social following is awesome and I'm like, dude, you have two million followers. What are you talking about? And he's like, yeah, but like you have, you know, whatever the number was at the time, 150,000 that are there for you. You ask them to do stuff and they go and do it for you. Whereas for him, it's like, you know, firing off a shotgun blast that maybe hits mm -hmm. 1% of that and maybe of that another 5% go and do what he wants to do. Right. And that's awesome. That's the power of the internet, right? And I feel like the fact of like when people come up to us and they're shaking, you're like, oh, I can't believe I'm meeting a celebrity. We're like, we're not celebrities. Mm. But it's like when you meet John Hamm, he might not act like Don Draper. But when you meet Nick Scarpino... He is as perverted. I act and, like Don Draper. Yeah. <laughs> he is the to, perverted my weirdo you know. Best approximation of a dirty Don Draper. Yeah. <laughs> Peggy, I need you in my office right now. <laughs> How long did it take you guys to get used to that? I know uh, for, you know, for me and like the podcast thing, I, I've, been, I've been in front of the camera for so long. And now what's fun is watching Nick and Tim get out for the first time and meet people and have it happen. Well, we had a slightly different trajectory, just that we, our faces weren't. Uh, the first thing people knew, sure. since we did Red vs. Blue, it's like people knew Master Chief and Spartans, and they didn't necessarily know us, but it goes back to what you talked about, the following. Since we had a community website, we would put our faces there, and people who were really diehard and were really active knew us, but beyond that, not really. But yeah. as we transitioned and moved into more camera-facing stuff, it's been a... It's been intimidating. It's been, a, it's been yeah. a long trip. I feel like I'm used to it now, but it took a while to get Yeah, there. that's the thing, right? I mean, you know, Colin's not here. And Colin's not here because Colin suffers from social anxiety and can only do so many of the, you know, hey, there are thousands of people here to meet you. And, like, we wore him out at SGC and before that at Momocon, and now he's rebuilding. He's in his Kryptonian bubble, healing, getting ready for the next event. But, yeah, that's a weird thing to get used to. I'm the same way. Like, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're super, I, I, like, I, super I, if I'm not here at this event, like, if, if this wasn't going on, I would be locked in my home. Yeah, like, like asking people to deliver stuff and leave it at my front door. <laughs> like, don't talk to me, don't look at me, that kind of stuff. Like the presidential suite. Yeah. Where there, the, no one knows what I'm talking about. All right. Gus has a presidential suite that he takes people to, and he makes love to them. Sexy times. Only, only you, Greg. No, <laughs> only me. Oh my, I still can't. I'm so sorry that I hit you with the bottle and it cut you. <laughs> no, I'm, I feel so I'm bad. Good. I'm fine. Look at I me. know, I know you're fine, but like. It's gonna be that thing. Bernie was already mad about this panel, and now he's gonna be even madder. Can you just maybe not tell Bernie that we hit you with a bottle? Yeah, just keep it between us. There's yeah. no cameras, right? Yeah. You so guys Gus, can all be cool, right? Everybody, pinky swear that you won't tell Bernie. You won't tweet Bernie. You won't say anything to Bernie. Every, I like it. Some Thank pinkies you. are going up Thank out there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, speaking of a pinky swear, Nick. Yes. Yesterday, you made a promise to some guys. Do you remember this? No. Was it at the bar? Because if it was at the bar, I don't remember anything. No, it wasn't at the bar. Plausible you were, you were stone cold sober. It was right. It was. Right, well, I don't know about that part. I guess. But you were <laughs> at a panel with us. Okay. Uh, Twin Stick Radio. Do you want to come up here real quick? Yeah. You can all share my microphone. Do you don't. Do you remember what you told these people they could do? No. All right. <laughs> I think. You, I think. So I think. Totally shirt off. Come over here. You take my really. side. You'll have to share one microphone. I don't know if you want to pass it around. Here. I'm gonna give you. Button. You have one minute. Starting at 3525, all right? There might be some blood, watch out. <laughs> Kevin, it's not that we hate you. 
we just want you to do better and reevaluate your performances for the company. Mm. We just think there's so much more potential in you and we really want you to be <laughs> just a better part of this team. Uh, Chris, you might be able to say this a little better than I can. Here's the deal, Kevin. I appreciate what you do, but you're doing everything wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's true. And that's just the deal of it, okay? Trey, can you elaborate? Yeah, Trey, lay it down. Kevin, I'm not mad at you. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> I, I really thought you were the best, but, you know, it turns out I was wrong. <laughs> we, seriously, we love you, Kevin. You're amazing. No, no, no. I mean, they like you, but you're a dick. <laughs> Twin Stick Radio, everybody. Awesome. Come listen. Thank you. I do remember that now, yes. So the new thing now is when you meet Nick Scarpino, you can ask to yell at Kevin. <laughs> I will gladly accept and totally forget about that. Did we, was that at the panel or during, at the meeting room? What happened is you brought it. How were the pocket nuts? What Good. do you do when I'm not around, Nick? Do you have more they, in there? Twin Stick Radio interviewed Nick, and at some point he poured nuts into their pockets. No, I gave them pocket nuts. There's a big difference. What okay. is the difference? The difference is one is in the pocket, and they're nuts. God bless you. Sounds like I, what I said. I don't I'm going to pour some nuts into your pocket, and you're going to love it. Just take it. Just take it? All right, all right. I'll take the nuts, everybody. So, Gus, another moment that we had with you where you, you gave us advice that hit us so hard that I don't even know if you realized was we were, you know, doing our whole community thing and, like, trying to like, get a community going, and we were pimping out our Reddit, subreddit. Mm. And um, you responded to Greg. You're like, no, get your own forums. You need this. And... We just stopped working that day. And we're just like, we need to get forms. Who the fuck can do forms? We can't do forms. How are we going to figure this out? Then Nick figured it out. Talked to people. Made some stuff happen. Yeah, well, yeah. The community, figured, out the community figured, figured it out. The community figured it out. Yeah. But now we have forms. We thanks do have to forms. You. And that's like... Basically, so, your word is law. Yeah. <laughs> if you say well, something, Tim stops me and says, whatever you... He takes the whole table and just wipes it off. And he's like, start over again. God damn it. Whenever... I mean, that's another thing we really believe in is just owning your own platform for the message. You know. When we started, if we had gone on the platform of the day, we'd still have a MySpace page or a Friendster page, you know. Um, and then after that, if we'd waited, we'd have a dig. Oh, no. Page, oh, yeah. You know, yeah, see? And then yeah. in five years, we would like Reddit. Remember that? Jesus, what happened yeah, yeah, to that? Yeah. You know, like that I'm stuff. huge on Tinder. <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to set up a Tinder profile. Yeah. Swipe right. Um, <laughs> so it's like it's important to own your own platform and have your own home that as long as you're creating stuff, that's not going to change. You're not constantly chasing someone else. You're not constantly increases someone else seeing, increasing someone else's valuation for mm -hmm. investors. You know, who gives a fuck if Condé Nast bought Reddit for $165 million or whatever? Like, that doesn't help you. Right. You don't want to contribute. I mean, it's fine. You can use it. It's a great community to tap into. But own your own home. Yeah. Don't rent. Buy. <laughs> <laughs> You should have it, called this Gus's words wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> Unless, wait, what was the? Has, has anyone watch Ballers? Oh yeah. Remember that series? Like, if it if it drives, it drives floats, floats, or flies, lease it. Yep. <laughs> that was smart. Ballers good is words. a good show. Ballers is a great show. Round of applause if you like Ballers. <laughs> we should all go watch that right now. We brought an exclusive episode of Ballers. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Like, how the hell did you get that? Oh, The Rock. Mm. Personal friend of mine. Mm. So, Gus, as we begin our journey, you guys are way ahead with the Rooster Teeth. Like, what's the next milestone for you guys? Uh, we just got to get this damn movie out the door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's the next big thing we're working on. It's just, you know, we're in post-production on the movie. We just got to get that out and then figure out what the next big project is. Yeah, I was really surprised. I thought when we were creating the movie, when we were filming, that it was going to cripple us and that we weren't going to be able to do anything else. Uh, but a lot of other people in the team stepped up, managed to, you know, fill in, and I feel like from an audience perspective, we didn't skip a beat. Everything still kept going fine, despite mm -hmm. the fact other people were in serious crunch on that movie. And sure. I Wait, didn't... so what was your initial plan with that, though? Because that, that's, let's take a step back on that. Like, your movies, you don't just film. Like, your normal production schedule, if it's anything like ours, is generally you shoot something, maybe you have a little pre-production, but you're all told it's a day, right? Right. Maybe you, I mean, you guys do bigger production, so maybe you do a couple days shoots, but on a, with a week total. What was your approach to doing something that's going to take six to eight weeks to just yeah. to film? We had to find people who knew 
about that. You know, who so knew did you? How much of the crew did you bring in outside? How was, much do you staff internally? It was a lot of outside crew. Yeah, uh, we did a lot of. Yeah, almost the crew was almost exclusively uh, outside people who. That's all they do. Okay. You know, we wanted to make sure that we had pros on it, and then we just supplied the talent right. uh, <laughs> portions of things. And uh, so it was, it was good. But there were a lot of those you know, big name talents like Bernie and Gavin and Michael were gone. I didn't see them for two months. That's crazy. Because they were filming the movie. And it was, uh, it was interesting. It was a lot of fun, though. What is, now, is this something that you guys like, learned a lot from? <laughs> like, I, I've talked to Bernie a little bit about this, but it seems like every time I see him, he's like, his brain's going a mile a minute trying to figure this all out, because it's a distinctively different business model than the one you guys do right now. Yeah, I mean, it's like, in, in doing, it's, it's very similar to how we approached this event as well, where, mm. like, with events, we thought, we've been to a lot of events, surely we know how to run one. Right. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> with a movie, you're like, I've watched lots of movies, I've watched director's commentaries, I know how to make a movie. No. <laughs> <laughs> like there's a lot, that's why we had to bring in you know professionals who right. worked on the crew who knew how to do like line producing and stuff mm -hmm. who you know we would tell them our ideas we're like no you're stupid that's, that's not, not gonna, gonna work. work that's gonna take like, you 10 days yeah to this is the way you're supposed to do it like okay so it was um it was it was a matter of finding people who knew what they were doing and then deferring to their expertise so not to hijack the conversation with with you know, movie production. This but is a what, po we're just doing a podcast I about know, Gus. I it's know, fine. Yeah. Go. I want you to hijack the conversation. So what? So you you're like we're gonna do a movie. We're gonna we're gonna fund it via the crowd. What's the ne once you're like okay, this is greenlit. This is going. Like we have the money for this. What was the next step? Who was the first call for the crew that you guys had to, do, to we, put together? Um, so when we, we approached it, we knew, and we we were very clear about this in our messaging. We wanted to be very straightforward on the crowdfunding mm -hmm. side of things. We knew whether or not the crowdfunding was successful. We were going to make the movie. Okay. We used crowdfunding to try to help add and make the movie extra awesome. Mm -hmm. So even before the crowdfunding went up, we had our infrastructure in place. We knew what we were doing. We knew who, the ball was already rolling gotcha. in, in pre-production. And um, then you know, once the crowdfunding kicked off, once that was going, it was like, okay, now we actually really have to do it. You know, it's an it was oh like, shit moment where you're like, like, this is gonna be reality yeah, for we gotta pick the next year of our life. We gotta pick a date on the calendar, we're gonna start shooting. We're like, all right, that's the date. No, no, that's the, no, <laughs> fuck, that, no, fuck. Um, then it's like, all right. yeah, then if we get to the practicality, it's like, oh, shit, we actually have to do it. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah it was, uh, was nerve-wracking, man. It's a grueling process, too, I have to imagine. Yeah, and because uh, like I said, you know, we were nervous taking so many people out for, for a couple of months and not having them. You know, Bernie and Gavin are normally always on the podcast with me, and I just couldn't use them. Right. So it's like, so I had to cut Brandon, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the had, bottom of the barrel. I was, like, I, I was like, people hate you, Brandon. I don't know. Um, it's like, it's like, goes back to like wrestling. You got to have like the hero and the heel. Yeah. It's like, yeah. if you're comfortable being the heel, I mean, that's fine. Come on out. I'm always comfortable <laughs> being the heel. Um, so then on a, on a grander level, what, so one of the things you, one of the questions that you asked earlier was what was the, the hardest step or the hardest thing for you taking that step? on your own. And for me, it was the fear of the unknown. It was the fear of not knowing what taxes to pay, how to set up a corporation, how to do all this stuff. And I thought, I'm like, cool, once we get past that initial burst of like, say it's going to be a month or two, and then we, got, we, hit, we hit Patreon, I was like, cool, that fear is going to go away. That fear hasn't gone away yet. <laughs> you're, you, you're in it to win it. Does that ever go away? No. <laughs> uh, it, never, it never does. So uh, we... You know, early on we had the, you know, the same struggles. You know, we, we have no idea what the hell we're doing. You know, we was just a couple of us in a spare bedroom and we thought, all right, well, we got to set up a business, I guess, you know. What are taxes? I don't yeah. know. And like, I guess this form, then you get the government says, no, you're doing it wrong. Yep. You got to do it this way. Like, okay, you, you obviously know. So, you know, we hired um, uh, an accounting firm. It was like a local accountant. Mm -hmm. And like, she would just come by our office once a week and look at our receipts and yell at us yeah because we just hand her like a shoe box <laughs> like, you can't just write your own receipt in crayon this is what we did like forty dollars no. shoes um, on, the, on the flip side of that too though like i feel like there's so many moments for us where we'll be doing something and then we just look at each other and we're like this is really happening i can't believe it like yeah. this year at e3 we were there and we're on the show floor and we're like we can see a logo that nick made in our, in the Greg's kitchen table, and it's like huge. It was so place. impressive. And it's crazy, and like there's this moment where we just look at each other, we don't even need to say anything, we're just like, uh, I can't believe this is real. Like, I'm sure you've had that, but now with Rooster Teeth, not just being Red versus Blue, there's like shorts, there's the podcast, and even more than that, there's like Fun House, and there's animation, and then there's all these different like sections. Do you still feel that? 
Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's super humbling and super crazy. I mean, we've got like a Pizza Hut logo with our RTX logo. Like, <laughs> that's a real company. Like, yeah. they, <laughs> they're really giving you money. Yeah, they trust in us. Yeah. They <laughs> screwed like, up. Have they seen what we do? Um, but yeah, I mean, like, it's stuff like that. Like, okay, yeah, if you say so. And, you know, the same, same thing at E3. You know, we were there also. It's like, you know, YouTube wanted us to do stuff with them. Like, Okay, um, are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> we will totally do it. You just want to make sure you know what you're getting into. And it's just like, it's always a reality check for that kind of stuff. Um, it's just like, it's just, I can't believe the life that we get to live. Thanks to, you know, the people who support you and who really uh, like the stuff that you do. That's why, like, yeah, as crazy as it is, if I'm running around here at the event, if someone, like, wants to take a picture or something, I'm like, I can't stop moving, but if we walk it, we can take a picture. Like, I want to try to, to, to shake everyone's hand. I want to try to see everyone as much as I can because we really appreciate every single person, you know, who, who helps us talk to Pizza Hut or mm -hmm. YouTube or yeah. all these other crazy people, mm -hmm. you know. We're only here because, uh, because of them. That's what I always tell people when they come up to us and they thank us. It's like, no, thank you. You know what I mean? We're just sitting around talking. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? We're happy to be part of your lives. We're happy to help you through whatever we're helping you through, but... Is you, we owe everything to you, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, real fast, I want to circle back on one more thing you were talking about. You know, also, we talk about the accountant and everything. Mm -hmm. So we actually had like a big discussion internally you know, when it came time to figure that out. Because mm -hmm. before then, it was like Bernie who was doing all of our right. taxes and doing it all wrong. Like you, Nick. Yeah, he's taller than me, though. And we, uh, you know, we reached a point where it was, it was becoming his job. Instead mm -hmm. of doing creative stuff, you know, yeah. he was taking care of all this. I've, and I've, I've noticed familiar that. With that. Yeah. We're familiar with that feeling. So then we had to sit down and decide, like, What's worth more? Is it wor you know? What is this person's time worth mm -hmm. more? Is is in this case is Bernie's time worth more, doing this paperwork, or is it worth more for us to hire someone one day a week to do to it do the and then yeah. have Bernie free five days for creative stuff? So it's like we really had to think about it, and we decided to to bring in an outside person to help with that stuff. But how so? How much of your business has been like that? So what we're noticing is that when there's a need, we fill it. Right? There's not a lot of strategic planning that we do because we never stop. We're always like looking at that next big challenge and thinking, how do we overcome that? We're not thinking necessarily strategically as much as we should. So how much for you guys over the years has it been like, uh, we need an editor, let's just go find an editor versus let's sit down and let's figure out what the vision is for the next year and try to staff accordingly. You're, I can already tell I, by your smile what the I answer think is. it took us 10 years to get to the point <laughs> to try to figure out vision. Like yeah. the first 10 years we're definitely scrambling like, oh shit, we need this, right. we need someone right, right now. now. What are we gonna do about this? And then, okay, fine, that's patch. It's like, you're patching a wall. Yeah. And you know, only within the last you know, two years maybe has it been like, let's try to plan this out and right. be smart about it. Because even like moving office spaces, every time we move, we're like, oh, we're back for five years, we're gonna be fine in here. And then within a year, we outgrow it. I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> See, we have Kevin, um, who we make do everything. Uh, but at a certain point, he's gonna drop dead. So he's gonna fall out the window, as you've heard many times. Oh on the my podcast. god! <laughs> Amazingly, Kevin's never broken a single thing, but it looks like he's breaking the world every time he moves. It's pros and cons with him. Well, pros what's worth cons. more, Kevin's life or the comedy? Well, the problem is that he's comedy. never on camera when he's about to die. He's always trying to get around the camera and then hopping. The closest he ever came was when he was for just as a friend fixing my subwoofer. And he, <laughs> <laughs> you're laughing. He was had it above his head. He's laying on the. He's laying on the ground with it above his head, and he finally got the thing out. And he like got up, he's like, I got it, and then it fell. And it was like, if he would have been down for two more seconds, his head would have been crushed like Larry in The Walking Dead. It would have been just over. It'd be like, oh my God. Sorry for the season one Walking Dead spoiler, but you should have played it by now. <laughs> we, uh, Spoilers, Lee dies too. At the last studio we were at, at, the, at our last studio, I talked to, you know, uh, our, we had, it, our security was provided by ADT. You know, they did all like the motion sensors mm -hmm. and alarms mm -hmm. and shit. And I had the ADT sales guy come out. And I was like, hey, listen, I know we have security cameras all over this place, but they don't have sound. Is there any way you could swap out all of our security cameras with like high definition cameras with sound like, so we can record everything constantly in case something funny happens and we're not recording it? <laughs> and the guy was like, you want like hidden cameras all around your office, <laughs> recording video and audio 24 hours a day, and you want to save it all for a month? I said, yes. He goes, that's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> I go, why? He goes, at a workplace, you cannot secretly film and, you know, and, and monitor audio over your employees. I was like, I was like what Shit. if we got Shit. A we can't? <laughs> I'm not about California. You got to take, yeah. take out the toilet cam. <laughs> Sorry, Tim. I was like, what if we got them to sign waivers? He's like, no, you cannot do that. Like, they don't even carry that product. They don't even carry your product. That's your video fascinating. And audio. I was like, all right. It's probably, like, that's it's how, probably that's better, That's how though. warped we all are, though. They were yeah. like, that, may, that makes sense. We should do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we're the same way of like, 
Oh man, we're about to do, wait, Periscope it. Wait, Tim wants to Snapchat it. Take a photo for Instagram. It's like, that's just the life for now. We're trying to be everywhere and do everything to hit every audience. Mm. Here's, a, here's a very important question. At what point did you guys realize it's time to move out of the living room and into a real, honest to God, adult space? So we started in 03. We were in a spare bedroom in 03. We moved in mm. 05 to an apartment. Uh, We've shitty, thought about that. We've talked one, about that. It was a one-bedroom apartment. It was great, actually. Uh, I re- highly recommend it. Uh, you, can, you can fit a desk. If it has washer-dryer connections, you can put a desk in there instead of a washer-dryer. <laughs> awesome. What if you want to wash your clothes? No, yeah, well, then okay. get fucked. Um, and then in 07, we moved into our first studio, which was right down the road on Congress. Uh, it's actually being torn down right now. Hmm. They're building a hotel there. If you get a chance, you should go swing by. Uh, <laughs> it, it's funny. Like, I, I, I got sidetracked. I, I love That's what this Welcome to our show. <laughs> Uh, I loved the thought at the time of moving into like a real office mm-hmm. and I was like this is gonna be so cool We're gonna be working downtown, you know, it's gonna be awesome. And then you get there like oh this building's a piece of shit <laughs> Yeah, like it's falling apart like a one-bedroom apartment was better than this. Yeah uh, And as they're tearing it down now, I guess it's easy It was easier for them to take the trash out It was easier for them to knock a hole in the wall and throw it outside <laughs> than to take it down the stairs So like there's a giant circle in the side of the building. and They're just like throwing all the shit out uh, uh, how long do you think it took them to figure that one out? It was like 10 days later, like, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah, just move <laughs> that wall. <laughs> Enough of these fucking stairs. Fuck these stairs, shit. So about, uh, probably about four years then to get okay. into our first, like, real office. space. And we found that on, like, Craigslist. Yeah. So in kind of funny time, it'll be like two months, and then we'll have it. Because we're dumb. And we were just like, let's just speed things up for no reason. But then we just keep throwing ourselves forward, and it seems like it's working. But one day we're all just going to, like... Oh, it'll just collapse. crumble. Yeah. yeah. One day we'll be like the Roadrunner where we're, or Wild Coyote and look down and realize there's no road there. And that's yeah, that's what's going to happen. That's one of the things that was scariest, you know, especially initially, was realizing that everything we did had to be a hit. Like if we had, because every hit basically bankrolled the next project. Sure. And it's mm-hmm. like if you have one that doesn't succeed, then you're just like, oh, everything's fucked. Yeah. So it's like it's really it was really nerve wracking going See, through that. That's what we have going for us is we don't have any hits. Yeah. Yep. So it's just kind of yeah. like if, if no we can content. maintain this level of mediocrity, if we ever succeed, we're if we're ever right. actually funny, we're fucked. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's only kind of funny. It's yeah. like yeah, no, we yeah. got to redesign the logo, uh, <laughs> rebrand the name. Um, but yeah, it, it was really scary for a long time. And then the 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 worst part is when you have that fear, you start playing it safe. And you start being very conservative with your decisions because you don't want to fail because yeah. you're afraid of, uh, of losing the farm, as it were. Yeah. Uh, so we're really, we're really grateful that uh, everything worked out, that every hit led to another hit. And uh, now we're, we're being a little more adventurous now. I, yeah. feel like it, I feel like that feeling is counterproductive, right? Because you live your, especially, you know, coming from a place where every day was um, you, predictable, right? You, you, if you work at a company like IGN for a long time, you get the feel of it and you understand how everything works. Leaving that and not really knowing how, like, what your next day is going to be is, is very, very terrifying. Um, I just totally lost my train of thought. Do you believe classic what we were just Nick. talking about? What classic Nick Scarpino. Talk about Damn. playing it safe, how it's counterproductive. <laughs> no. Oh, right. So this is the problem, right? So in a, in a company like, you know, in a corporate environment like that, like, it, it behooves you to do that. When you're doing your own thing and you're trying to get, you know, become successful, you have to fight that feeling in you that constantly says, do the safe thing, do the right thing, because sometimes the wrong thing is the right thing, right? Throwing a live event for us deep was probably the stupidest idea we could have done. And four months in, we were all tired. None of us really knew what was going on. And then all of a sudden, we're like, we got to throw a live event. And that became our focus. That became my focus for like two months, primarily. Um, And it worked, and it was awesome. And so what that keeps teaching me is people like watching us go out there and do weird, crazy, wacky shit. And it doesn't even matter if we succeed or fail. It's just the process that I think is the most important thing. And, and, and allowing people to share in that yeah. and watch us go through, try these weird, just try stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. But for me, that, that was actually one of the hardest things is like, I'm like, I need structure. I need to know exactly what someone's going to do. I need to know if I promote it, it's going to do this. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, and all that, so. I've been well, doing a lot of interviews here, right, at RTX. And a lot of people are asking us like, well, so what's next for you guys? Da, da, da. I'm like, well, on Thursday, we're sitting down to have an actual we're going into an offsite. We're sitting down and planning out what the next six months to a year of the site and the you know, product looks like and what our new shows are going to be and how we're going to fit them in. And it's crazy because I explain it as like, after we get done with RTX, that's really our first breath. We've been running nonstop since January 5th. Mm-hmm. And now we're going to get there and be like, all right, we've done all that. 
<laughs> that looked like that. Like, mm. what do we want this to look like? Because right now it's all been like, oh, we want to do love and sex stuff. So we'll shoot it on the weekends and we'll make this happen. All right, well, we want to do nicknames and that's going to happen this morning. We fit all this stuff into a schedule that is already overloaded and packed in. And it's like, how do we move to the next thing intelligently? And what do we do? So we can then run for another six months yeah. and then look back and figure it out. And of course, we're going to spend the entire day planning and then like, a month later, it's all going to go to shit. <laughs> no, but we're going to not a, let that's that That's because we're going to go to Starbucks like 10 times that day. No, we're not going to actually fine. do anything. Um, It'll be good. Well, what, <laughs> when you talk about, you know, um, being conservative and that being counterproductive, it's like going to Vegas. It's like if you bet a you little bet, bit of money. Yeah, $5, you're just going to lose. Right. Yeah. You're not going to win very much if you do win at all. You've got to bet a lot if you want to win a lot. You've got to put it out there. Boom. If everyone, I could drop thank this mic, I would drop it. <laughs> yeah. It's true. There you go. It's true, but that's, that's a hard thing, and especially, you know, when you got skin in the game, that's a hard thing to rectify. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it's, it was actually a lot easier. It's, I mean, it was a, really easy to just experiment and do whatever the hell we wanted to do at IGN because there were really no consequences. Sure. IGN put out so much content that if something we did failed, you were like, whatever, it's, I, what was it? I totally forgot about it. Oh, we're already moving forward. We're like a week ahead of time already. Um, yeah, if something failed, they let it, you do it for three years, and no one ever questioned it. <laughs> You're spending how much money to get I, Whatever, just bring them up. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> But so yeah, okay, they can't fire you again. So okay, we talked about again. the <laughs> Craig. We talked about the office and stuff, and then we were, you were talking about how you know Bernie was doing all the accounting stuff, and then he needed to do the creative thing. What would you say are the most important? Like now that it is just the four of us and Kevin, what should be the next person that we get to help us? I think the sooner you can, and, and it's not like a glamorous position, but the sooner you can find a support person, like a support staff person, you know, be it like someone who can help you organize your scheduling or you know help out with paperwork like just someone who can do the not front of camera stuff someone who could take care of the mundane behind camera stuff to let you guys focus more yeah. on the front of camera creative stuff you know that is going to be invaluable people always ask well you know people used to ask but well, they still do i don't know what <laughs> i've got a concussion um people always ask like what they can do to get a job at rich teeth and for the longest time what i always told them was get an accounting degree if you can be an accountant, <laughs> we need someone to come in and like do our books and like take care of all of that stuff in order to allow us to continue to keep doing what we're doing. We have, you know, right now at our building, you know, we have all the creative in one building and we have a separate building just filled with support people. And when we do the tour, I'm like, this is like the least glamorous part of the office, but we couldn't do anything if these people didn't show up right. and, you know, do the mundane heavy lifting and uh, it's, but, it's really important but you guys also have a habit of taking some of those people and then like slowly but surely they become personalities yeah, yeah. that's an awful problem <laughs> <laughs> and like literally like I mean take Kevin for instance right um, he was like I don't want to be on camera I just want to be behind the camera but the problem is even him being behind the camera he became the personality that was behind the camera right. and he's got that beautiful beautiful childish laugh <laughs> um, there it is again uh, <laughs> And it, I don't uh, even think that was him. I think that was, I that was someone else. That, that, was that, was that was amazing. I saw Kevin, Kevin that's smile. That's how iconic like, your laugh has become. We need to get one of those plushies of him where you, you, you squeeze them and it'll laugh. He's just squeaky. <laughs> um, Go tickle him so everyone can hear his laugh. No, just sell it as a, uh, as a ringtone on the uh, iTunes. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's a good idea. That's a great um, idea. Kevin, we're going to monetize your entire body. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, I need, I'm going to need a wax sculpture of your balls. Is that cool? No, Greg, don't shake your head. You knew what you were getting that yourself into seven shake. months that ago. That was a questioning, and then I was like, yeah, I'm in. Yeah, no, we'll I'm need that. It. We'll need that. I was thinking it. you could do the thing where it's like the tea bag, where it's like, you know, you put the tea, the oh, tea in the bag. Right. Get, a cast, get a cast of his balls, and then you can dunk. Christine, you always make tea with the thing. You know what I'm talking about. The look on Steimer's not, face right not, now. Not with a balls cast. You know what I mean. Like the your Death Star. Like a steeping ball or something. Yeah. A, ste yeah, they, a sticking I ball? made that up, and I, I was right. <laughs> steeping. But but where do you in all, in all seriousness where do you draw the line with that right because at a certain point you can't your accountant who might be funny and and you put them on camera for a second you have that person like that you start to take their attention away from the job that you need them to do so how do you rectify that how do you manage that you get them a separate building and you hide them in it you lock the door <laughs> uh, you stay away from every camera we own it's it's hard you know and then there's some people who it it makes sense after a while yeah. I don't I don't know there's it's really just an there, organic there is, thing. There is no easy answer to that, man. Even, you know, doing this event, you know, Barbara and I organize uh, RTX. Mm -hmm. But then once RTX starts, since we're also... No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not, fi I'm not fishing for that. Standing shit. ovation! Once
How, how is it that this is worse than getting in the head, hit in the head with a bottle? <laughs> um, but then once the event starts, since we're- 10 minutes, he's pointing to the sign. 10 minutes. Since we're front of camera people, once the event starts, like we're crippled as far as like being able to do anything to right. help sure. the event because right. you know, we're locked up anytime we step outside. We have a lot of people that we want to meet and talk to. So, yeah, but so, that, so that blew me away, right? Like I, I met Barbara, I think, for the first time last year. And I was like, oh, I know you as someone who does content for Rooster Teeth. And, she, and then Tim was like, no, 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 man, she like plans this whole thing. And I was like, what? Yeah. Like, I, I don't understand that. And then, I mean, I get it because that's what I have to do as well. Like I have to plan stuff and simultaneously be, you know, the funny guy on camera, the sexy guy on camera, <laughs> you know. Heavy the, is the, the crown, Nick. Heavy camera. is the crown. <laughs> yeah, um, but like... You would think that at a certain point, you're like, Barb, just like relax. Let's get someone else who doesn't want to be on camera. But then the problem becomes like, does it behoove you to start taking those people who really know the business and pushing them forward as talent? Because then it has that organic, like they have that connection with the audience. You're not just bringing someone in outside that's a pretty face. Mm -hmm. You've got people that are homegrown, part of the community, and you're elevating them. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a huge plus for them. You know, right. that, and that's what, I think that's what complicates it and makes it like, impossible to answer it's like a case-by-case -case thing yeah just trying to figure out you know luckily we we were able to uh, hire a dedicated events manager a month ago oh awesome and she's had the probably the worst month of her That's, life that was <laughs> yeah, just a just a just a i mean i don't really know your business maybe start six months or yeah, like a year like, before the like, next one maybe hire another one like yeah. now we, she started and i was like listen this is gonna be bad. You're, 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 we're just gonna we're just gonna be working nonstop. So we're hoping that you know, starting next year, she's already doing a ton with this event, but hopefully starting next year, she can really take a lot more point on it, which will free us up yeah. to be more you know personality front of camera. Well, next so. year she'll have a couple panels to be on, I'm sure. I know. That's, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, what's her name? We'll invite her to the panel for next year. Sure. How many people work at Rooster Teeth now compared to when you first started? When we first started, there were three of us. Uh, now we just hired employee, I think 115. Jesus. Holy shit. It's a hell of a holiday party. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot of people. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we, I, I feel embarrassed, you know, there's so many people that sometimes I walk around and be like, who is that guy? <laughs> Does he, was he, oh, he doesn't work here. Okay. okay. Or then they're I, like, oh no, he's, been, he's, he's worked here for two years? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, he's I, my brother. Like, that's like, Miles what? Luna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Miles, actually, that's, Miles was, you know, he started at the last studio. Miles might have been like employee 20 or something. Damn. On, uh, on Miles' first day, he walked in, and I was the only person in the studio at the time because we were still small enough where like everyone was at lunch or something. And uh, Miles comes up to the door. He goes, hey, you know, my name's Miles. Uh, uh, I'm here to start work. You know, it's my first day. I was like, who are you reporting to? He's like, uh, Brandon. Brandon. You know, Brandon's going to be my boss. Like, Brandon's not here. He's like, okay, cool. Well, I can just go sit at my desk and wait for him. I was like, no, you need to leave. I was like, um, why don't you come back when, my, when, uh, when Brandon's here? So like it was his first day of work and I kicked him out. <laughs> <laughs> he, he went down the street to like GameStop and like sat in the parking lot like, and waited for Brandon just to come back. Heat, just, just playing sweating. on one of those shitty demo units that like the controller's not quite where you want it and you're just like, why is it up here? Yeah, it's, and it's plastic. that close to the thing. Yeah. You can't even get your fingers at triggers. Yeah, but it's, and, and then now, of course, you know, Miles has been there for so long. And you, know, and you still won't let him in the building. I still don't let him in. <laughs> like, I don't know who you are. You should go back to GameStop. Still seems like a bogus, bogus story you're telling us, kid. Get out of here. Yeah, I think we went from three people initially uh, in 03. By the time we moved into the apartment, there were, I want to say, six of us. And by the time we moved into the studio downtown, there were seven, I think. Uh, then we moved into the last place down south, there were 11 of us. Wow. Then by the time we left that studio, there were, God, what, last year when we moved, there were 70 of us. Jeez. So what, what, year, that sounds like a much bigger jump than the other ones. Like, what happened there? Ruby. Mm. With, yeah, we had to hire a bunch of animators. We started doing, um, we had to hire an animation team to do, you know, Red vs. Blue animated stuff and, and to start doing Ruby. So that, that was just like a crazy amount of growth. And a lot of times when people come to tour the facility, they ask, you know, oh, you know, they're interested about Ruby. Like, where do you animate it? We say, oh, right here. These are the guys. Like, and they're like, no, no, really. Where do you send it? Like, <laughs> you send it to, like, Korea or Japan? Like, no, it's those guys right there. Like, yeah, but where is it animated? Like, it's right there. I don't know what you're not, <laughs> you're not understanding. It's, it's really unusual, I guess, to do animation in the United States because it's much more expensive to do it here. Well, but you guys have sort of figured out 
a good model for that, right? Like, do you use the same animation team for, for all the animated products that you have, or do you, like, switch around members? Now we're starting to. Starting to. So we're getting a lot better about that. Before, with scheduling, yeah. some, some of the shows overlapped, and it was impossible. Right, okay. Now we have an offset between them, so we can keep them working constantly. Were you noticing, though, that when you were... <laughs> yeah. No well, breaks. Well, no, no vacation. It's, danger. It's, it's great for them, because uh, before that, we were just hiring them on as contractors, because oh, yeah. we needed them for a couple of months, right. and then it's like, we don't have any more work for you guys. You know, now that we have work for them all the time, we can actually hire them as employees because they, they'll have stuff to do. Yeah, I mean, that's the danger, right? It's like the, famously, I think the, the people that did the facial reconstruction for Benjamin Button was this one company that got hired to do Tron, but because of the seasonality of the jobs, all of the contractors that were great had left, so the Tron stuff mm -hmm. didn't look as good. Their and faces so look terrible. Yeah, I mean, and I could, be, I could be paraphrasing that or getting that completely wrong, but, that, but the, the you point is... You know! Yeah, yeah, <laughs> talk out of my ass a lot. The point is, yeah, you're getting a talent drain, right? Because if your talent gets hired for something that's a little longer, then you don't get that key animator or that, or that guy that really knows what he's doing. Um, so that's got to be really hard to manage yeah, that and process. Yeah, but we're, I feel like within the last year, we've really solidified that. And you know, we added new properties like the X-Ray and Vav animated series. We mm -hmm. have a, a team that's dedicated pretty much just to that. And they are, like, they're amazing. Like looking at their portfolios and mm -hmm. stuff they've worked on, like that team is so good that they've told us that there's like other animation studios like trying to poach them and like take them. But they stay with us because they say they like working there. That's so relaxed and it's a, it's a cool place to be. That's good. That's well, good, that's a good yeah. environment. Yeah, but they're, they're awesome. It's like an all-star team. That was... I mean, so how was that jump though? I mean, not that you guys, I mean, you guys have always done Red versus Blue, but the actual jump to that, anim to, to being an animation house, that must have been a big learning curve. Again, it's like, we don't know what we're doing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, let's find one person who knows right. and then can hopefully teach us and then bring in, start like assembling a team. Like be the sort of supervising producer and can come and build his own team. Right, and that's, uh, that's really what we did. You know, we were really fortunate to find, uh, find the right people to, mm -hmm. uh, to help get us started right. and then build the team and then show us like the right way to do it. Yeah, you guys are always really good at that. Like one of the hard things is letting go of that control of like trying to trust the people that you're hiring because they should know more than you. Yeah. Um, and you guys seem to, I mean, outwardly, lo you, you seem to be really good at that. I'm really bad at it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I used to do all of our like podcast, we refer to it as broadcast, like all of our live streams and all of our podcast mm -hmm. stuff. But it was just like driving me crazy. I mean, it was, it was basically the department was me. Like, it was me doing all right. of it. So we hired someone to do it. And I think for the first probably year he worked there, I was just like looking over his shoulder like, no, no. Like, <laughs> not the way to do it. Like, you got to be doing it this way. Then I one day I realized, like, I'm an asshole. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm micromanaging this guy to death. Like, he knows what he's doing. Why am I still, like, not trusting him to do sure. his job? That's hard. I and mean, that's on a micro level. Grant said we have Kevin. Hi, Kevin. I do that with Kevin. I catch myself. I'm like, what the, what the fuck does it matter how he sets this up? As long as the, the, the end is the exact same, is the desired thing, I don't care about how he got there. Yeah. You know? For the most part, unless you know, it's Kevin, he's taking a sweet time, then he needs to Kevin, speed hurry it up. up, Kevin. Speed it up. Do I, have to get the, do I have to get the twin stick guys up here to yell at you again? Um, <laughs> they're ready. <laughs> you fucking, fucking hate ready. me. <laughs> uh, Gus, we're in our final two minutes of the panel. Uh-oh. What do we do next? What, what is, what you, we made the forums, what else do you want from us? Um, I, I think you guys have done so much right. I think it's, you know, you're building a community. I mean, the big thing, like what I talked about earlier, is just make sure you're driving everyone back to sure. your forums, driving them back to your website. The other social media stuff, Twitter, Periscope, all that bullshit, that's just like tools to bring them back to sure. you. Um, you know, just continue that and uh, do another live event, man. Oh, that, no. that was fun to see. Thank you. I wanted to go in person. I was, I think I was out of town somewhere else at the time. But uh, it was really cool to see the, the video when it was all wrapped up and yeah. done. I'm super impressed with the guys, with the job you did. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, yeah Tim. Tim. Tim edited Tim. that video. I edited the awesome. shit out of that video. Nice. It was awesome. <laughs> Check it out. YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny. Kind of Funny Live 2 will happen, I assume, sometime next year. Yeah. So, so book your plane tickets probably, now to wherever we do it. Probably earlier, I would imagine, though. I don't think we want to butt it up. May was a little bit... No matter. It, 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 there will February. never be a good time to do it. That's true. That's the problem. That's very true. Look at you. You do this thing in the, uh, in the hottest place on Earth, in the hottest <laughs> month on Earth. Well, you you got to find... I mean, that, and that's another struggle. It's like, when are you going to do it? We did it in the summer because kids can travel better. They're not in school. Good point. Uh, you know, it's, and then figuring out everyone else's event schedule. You know, oh, are we going to be competing with San Diego Comic-Con, PAX, like yep, when are yep, all these yep, other yep, shows? Yep. Mm -hmm. It's a nightmare. Yeah, no, it's terrible. Because like, it, when we finally settled on ours, then it was the, ah, oh, but I got college finals. And I was just like, well, don't take them. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like is bullshit. Like when I booked these dates for RTX, you know, it was like, great, we got it all figured out. It's August, you know, it's going to be hot, but oh well. Then like the next week, I was like, oh, Gamescom, right. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we screwed that up. Gus, thank you so much for Thanks all your for time. Me, man. I'm so sorry I made you bleed. Quit apologizing. Okay, well, I'm just saying I feel really bad. I just bad. want to take a nap now. <laughs> no, no, someone no, keep no, away from me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Kind of Funny Podcast here with Gus. Thank you so much for coming out and supporting us. We love you all. Don't forget a 4 o'clock meet and greet, Easy Tiger. 4 o'clock meet and greet, Easy Tiger. If you can't come because you have other RTX stuff to do, I understand. I love Easy Tiger. That place is great. You should totally go. Thank you all.